Well, hello everyone. My name is Zachary O'Shea, and this is Box of Teeth. I have another horror-themed monster for Dungeons & Dragons for all of you today, so go ahead and stay tuned. Today we have the final minion for the Universal Antagonist I was covering last month in March that's kind of bled over here into April. That antagonist being La Contessa. She's an amalgamation of Count Dracula and Professor Van Helsing kind of rolled into one creature. She's a former noblewoman whose family and country were destroyed by vampires and she went on the hunt. She's also an chemical genius that used black science to transform herself into an undead abomination of a unique sort. Through the years as she's continued this battle against the undead, her morality has slowly but surely bled away, and this leads her to really think that the ends justify the means, and this final minion, which is the Aspergem Golem, really personifies that. As a quick reminder, the three horror subgenres that she and her minions follow are as follows, gothic horror, scientific horror, and vampire horror. That being said, let's go ahead and jump to the Aspergillum Golem, which is a little difficult to say. Teetering on two skeletal thin legs, the Aspergillum Golem's name originates from its equally thin arms. While exquisitely made, these articulated limbs end in bulbous extremities from which holy water constantly dribbles from dozens of small holes. Like torn muscles, reinforced hoses wrap around each arm and connect to its literally barrel torso. Inside that torso are gallons upon gallons that are magically refreshed of water, but why is it holy? Well, first off, the bands around the barrel itself are spiked and etched with common day prayers against the undead. But most importantly, atop the barrel, in a jar, is a pickled head of a priest, and its spine runs directly into the water below. As mentioned, if anyone really believes that the end justifies the means, it is La Contessa. Like any other vampire hunter, she understands that holy water is something that hurts undead, but it's usually just not in the quantities that one needs unless you're dealing with everyday skeletons or zombies. You just need more of it to be particularly effective. It took her years to come up with a viable solution, and this only came after she realized that she should. And this only came when she really came to terms with animating other corpses with alchemical means besides just herself. And the first thing she did is she went and dug up a dead priest, chopped off their head, attached the spine to it, dripped it in some water, and lo and behold, somehow it worked. Once she crafted a golem body that could carry this terrible, terrible contraption, again, a pickled head in a jar, and a spine that would just bless water as it comes up, well, she put in a decanter of endless water, and now she had a font of blessed liquid that never ran out, that also followed her commands. She doesn't know why this works either. She just thinks perhaps that science will always overcome faith, and that's where she puts her faith now. Of course, this creation more than any other can turn heroic characters against La Contessa, but she doesn't mind too terribly much. After all, most adventuring parties contain clerics, and the remains work just as well as any other ones once the battle is done. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the Aspergillum statistics for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Aspergillum Golem is a challenge rating 8 large construct that is lawful neutral. It has a pretty low armor class, but a decent amount of hit points. It does have damage immunity, though, to necrotic poison and weapon attacks that are not magical or made out of adamantine, so that makes it pretty darn tough, as well as a lot of condition immunities you would expect a golem to have. Like many golems, it does have a mutable form, so it can't be shape-changed into something else. It does also have Berserk, which is similar to a Flesh Golem. It does also have Cleansing Rain, so at the start of each of the Golem's turns, all creatures that are within 5 feet of the Golem that are alive heal 1d6 hit points. All creatures, however, that are undead take 1d6 hit points. La Contessa and all of our alchemical undead count as living for this effect. It also has magic resistance, and its attacks are magical weapons, and it can also sense undead, even invisible ones that are within 30 feet. Another caveat with that Berserk I mentioned earlier, it always attacks undead creatures first, if able, because it hates them that much. This one, however, does not make La Contessa and the rest of our chemical undead safe, because that priest inside still knows there's something wrong with them. Attack-wise, it does have slams, because it has those big, huge, bulbous fists that of course do bludgeoning damage, and is, one might expect, extra radiant damage when it's hitting undead creatures. And it does have multi-attack, so it can attack twice per round with those. 
At the very end, it does have a recharge attack of Holy Font, which is basically the geyser from Decanter of Endless Water. So it's a cone effect that does bludgeoning damage and, of course, does radiant damage if it hits undead creatures. You can either Golem, the Aspergillum. Golem is definitely a heavy hitter and it's also very hard to say. You could easily use it to crush some player characters, or you could have it wiping out a den of undead as a demonstration of what sort of power Law Contessa has for the players to observe. Or even you could have the players go and dig up an old corpse of a priest and bring it to La Contessa and then later realize what she needs it for. How would you use it in your own campaign? Of course, you can find La Contessa all over minions and hundreds of other creatures that are all horror themed, all perfectly free, and all for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition at boxofteeth.blogspot.com. If you're more interested in the non Dungeons Dragons related horror projects that I have, they're all role-playing stuff, or the horror fiction that I write that includes Grease Paint right here. It's got a killer clown in it, no undead, but book two's out soon, and it just might. You can always go to www.zachryoshea.com. I really do appreciate your time and your attention, and I hope you have a great rest of the evening.